In this video, I'm going to do a little basic overview of exponential growth. I'm not going to talk about it in like a uh, sociological sense of, you know, random population growth and overpopulation and all that stuff. I'm just going to talk about it like you'd see in a math class, but, you know, I just want to warn you ahead of time in case you accidentally came here uh, it's searching exponential growth. Anyway, uh, when I talk about exponential growth, of course, I'm talking about sort of the idea that I'm going to, in general, starts out low and then goes up very quickly. Or, uh, if it was a decay, I'd be going down. But generally, you know, just sort of increasing over time significantly. That whole zombie movie scenario tends to fall into the exponential growth where it starts off with just a few people and then everybody gets it, that sort of thing. So, let's look at the basic setup of uh, exponential growth is based off the idea of an exponential function, whereas um, each one of your variables has a purpose. So, in this case, this is your initial amount. Wherever your scenario starts is basically uh, your A value. Or you may say something like um, that's where the y axis is. Or if we were doing a graph, it would be where x is equal to 0. So in my little graph that I had before, probably somewhere right around in here. In most situations, it's not going to go below the line. And the A value is going to be either 0 or above. Most of the time, it's above in the real world. Um, now, your B value would be the uh, base component or I mean it's essentially the base but really it's your growth factor how much is it changing like if it was by percentage or if it doubled or tripled that sort of thing and the number has to make sense if it doubles it's two here because it does by two times but most things don't grow at that rate it tends to grow at uh, a percentage so uh, the most of the ones that we're going to do for examples tend to be uh, you want to make sure that it's probably one point something uh, just for the most part and then finally you have your x value which is your input value or um, you know in some cases so here's your exponent whatever your input is how long how many times you're doing it that sort of thing a lot of the stuff uh, in real world or word problem scenarios will say it happens for this many years well that's what that means you know, no big deal. Let's do three of them and then be done with it. The first one is about a population growth. Uh, there's a population of 2,400. It has a growth rate of 1%. And I want to know, after 10 years, what the population is likely to be. Now, uh, I'm going to go back to the equation. Most of the time, this is the type of thing that would show up on either in the problem itself, if it's in a math class, or there's some sort of, uh, like, um, formulas page. I'm losing my mind. I should say at this point of shooting, I've been shooting for a lot of different videos today. So if you've seen any of the other exponent ones, it was probably today. So I'm going to set this up. My A value, of course, is my starting point, so 2,400. Now the B value is a little more complicated. And by that, I mean not really that much more complicated, but a little bit. Uh, I don't want to do 1%. It is my growth rate, but I want it to be also considering the current amount. Because if I start multiplying it by uh, point one which is one percent so I might want to make a note to myself this is 0.01 not 0.1 otherwise I'm getting to 10 percent and if you don't know divide by a hundred it gives you the decimal but uh, the reality is I want to also consider the 2400 in there so I have to multiply by 1.01 that way I'm considering in my multiplication the original amount as well otherwise it'll just give me what one percent of this is so I'd say in the second year it would give me that many more but that's not very helpful. I want to know what the total amount is. If I was just talking about how much is it going to grow, fine. I want to know what the total amount of people in the town is. That's more interesting to me. And the 10 years, of course, would be the part that changes. So I can go in and I can do uh, the, you want to do the exponent part first just because it's the uh, order of operations it says so. So you just do what it says. And you end up with this. And then I'm going to multiply it by 2400. And it gives me this, so 2,651.09, which says somewhere in the range of probably around 2,651. You tend not to have 0 .09 parts of a person anywhere in your town. If you do, I mean, if you've got a foot lying around or something, that might be kind of awesome, or a toe, I guess. That's a very small percentage of a person. But anyway, there it is. What's well, 9%? It could be a foot. And the next one... 
same basic thing. Uh, we're talking about deer population. This is actually sort of a th the type of thinking that no matter where you are, even if you live in a very urban area, a city, um, there's probably rural areas in your state and a lot of the game wardens in your state have to think about this sort of thing because if you don't have any sort of natural predator for a deer or um, there's no I guess hunting or something to balance out the amount of population growth that deer have overpopulation of deer is very sad I mean th they tend to eat a lot of the plant life around until there's really nothing below a certain height uh, that exists for them to eat and then they become very thin. Uh, I'm not advocating one response to this over another so they don't try to make it into this making a political statement. I'm just saying deer population is something that the people who control, uh, help control or you know preserve wildlife have to consider. So if you have uh, 18,100 deer in your state and you have a growth rate of 5% which is a pretty big growth rate by the way, um, what's the population in 2020? So we'll start with the same formula, <coughs> we'll have to make some um, adjustments, just a few of them. So I, my starting point is 18,000, and this is supposed to be an A, not a 9, 18,100. My B value would be uh, what my growth factor is, so 5%, so once again it's 1.05. Now the x value is different. You don't put 2020 in there. I want to know uh, how much it is starting here and going here. So I have to think in my head, okay, that's six years. Because if you don't do that adjustment, you'll get some gigantic number that doesn't matter. Essentially, if you put 2020 in, you're asking, okay, what's the population in 2020 years from now? But that's not what I want to know. I want to know in this year, what is it? So make that small adjustment and it should get you to the correct answer. So we're going to raise that to the sixth power. And then I'm going to do times 18,100, and I see 24,000 and 50, and I'm going to round up just a little bit here, 6. Because it's a prediction and not I'm trying to make something that already exists uh, be real, I, it's okay to round up a little bit in most cases. Unless your teacher says otherwise, then just do what they say because they're going to give you a grade, I'm not. But it's a prediction, essentially, so it, you'd say about 24,256 or 255, whatever. Somewhere in that overall range is where you want to grab for that deer population. Now that number doesn't mean anything outside of context, so it sort of depends on what the constraints of your state are to whether that's a big number or a small number and then how do you affect that number is a whole other conversation but mathematically speaking the big deal is to make the adjustment here and really here because you do that 2020 thing it's gigantic so uh, one more it's actually two parts I sort of cheated this is uh, based on some of the data that's come out and I can't remember for the life of me oh I think the college board uh, did this um, this analysis, but don't quote me. I did get the data from somewhat reputable site. I just forgot to cite it. I'm not trying to rip them off, but I think uh, I'm got college data is the site I originally looked at, but I forgot what the uh, the college board of education or something like that did the original study. Anyway, you don't care about that. Um, the annual increase in tuition and fees, just tuition and fees for public four-year colleges, is about 4.2 percent per year between 2003-4 and the 2013-14, so the school year that I'm currently in right now. Um, and you, who knows when you're watching this. But that's about 4.2%, and really it's been steadily sort of in that general range over the last, you know, 20 to 30 years back in the 80s. They were doing, they did some data collection then as well. So 4.2% per year. If you are an in-state college student, uh, you pay on average $8,893 just in tuition and fees. This isn't housing or anything. Uh, I didn't include housing because only 40% live on campus when like 40% live off campus and then 20% live at home or something. Uh, and then on the other side of it, if you're from out of state, it's 22203 Now in the first question, I want to know what the likely tuition and fees are going to be in uh, 2020 and then I'm going to do it in 2030. Now we're doing uh, 2014, so we'll say that six years again. So I guess it's the uh, 2019 20 school year, so 2029 and 30 school year. 
If you want, you can do it with 7, and it would be 2020, 2021. Whatever you feel like you need to do is fine. But anyway, uh, I'll set up the same basic equation that I did before. My starting point, of course, is 8,000. 893. My growth factor here at 4.2% would be 1.042. Don't put 1.42, that would be 42%. Um, and then I'm going to raise it to the sixth power. So 11,000. 382 or 83 dollars something like that for a the 20 29 20 30 campaign we're looking at it 16 years from now starting at the same spot 8893 um, I'm doing it by a growth factor of 4.2 percent and it's 16 years so from here, by the way, if you notice a little glitch in the video, the thing shut down on me, so I'm not too happy right now. Anyway, um, 8,893, and I'm doing it by 1.042. Good thing I didn't do that. 8,893 times uh, 1.042, and remember that means 4.2% uh, ad added each time, and I'm going to do it for 16 years. So this is if uh, you have a, a new brother or sister that's very young and you're watching this, or maybe you have a 16-year-old. I don't know how old you are. It's a, somebody who's zero and is going to be in college age, so I guess they would be uh, not 16. I don't know what I was saying. Uh, going to college in 16 years, so if they're two right now. Oh, I have a two-year-old. This is frightening. I'm a little scared to hit the button. Anyway, in state, she will likely be paying 17 176 on average if they increase this. Makes me very excited and maybe start to think about what my uh, m monetary planning things have, have what I've been doing, which is not enough apparently. Anyway, let's talk about out-of-state tuition for public schools. The average rate is twenty-two thousand two hundred and three. So this is once again in play. My initial value will change significantly here, but my uh, growth factor is still the same as is my input ex, uh, exponent value. So 22.203 times 1.042, and I'm raising that to the sixth power. So out of state in six years, that's scary, isn't it? I feel like, oh, I typed in the wrong number, thank goodness. Goodness gracious, that was driving me ins I put 1.402, 1.042 raised to the 6th power. That would have been frightening. My heart dropped. Still, it's not good. <laughs> 28,189, not good. And I dread to see this next one. Because like I said, at the time of me shooting, I currently have a 2-year-old. I also have a 1-year-old. Man, I'm going to pay for that. Um, 1.042 again, and that time I'm raising it to the 16th. This will determine something very soon if we're going to have to have a little conversation about staying in state slash scholarship slash junior college. So there it all is. It's the original amount, my growth factor, and my exponent. 42,883 Actually, it runs up to around 84. So that's exponential growth. So if you worry, uh, your parents talk to you about college or you are a parent and you have kids and they're going to college, um, that's why the fear is in the voice of the parent or, or anyone else or why they're pushing you to do really well on that test that you don't think matters. It's because uh, that scary number there. So uh, hopefully this is some benefit to you in terms of exponential growth. Really not that complicated. A few adjustments uh, will really get you to the correct answer most of the time.